Good afternoon, Jurassic World fans. So, I have made a game with... Well, I'll start this off. Uh, I am a game designer. Um, I just always have been my whole life. I always look at things and think, there's something better we can do with that. There's something I can do to make this like so much more fun. Some kind of game I can design with it. And I saw that with Mattel's Jurassic World figures. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't have enough money to buy those stuff. But once I got into high school, I was looking at these things. And I was like, yeah, I want to buy these. I have an idea for a game. So... Uh, you also might hear a little bit of walking. I'm like walking when I rant a lot. I like to walk around um, So I'm gonna walk around in a circle in my room while I talk <laughs> and you'll also be seeing uh, I'm looking at my notes because I made this game like two years ago I'm not gonna remember the rules for it, but so I'm glad I wrote it down um, But I haven't played it in a little bit and well, you guys will be seeing uh, some action footage and I'll show you like things about the game um, But I wanted to show you guys this game because I thought it was cool uh, and I teased a little bit about it and a lot of people said, yeah, I'd love to see you play that. So I'm gonna give a rule book here so you guys can watch this video and know how it works. And then I'll make a video, probably even live stream, uh, sometime later and we'll actually play the game. So, uh, I feel like I was talking about something else, I forget. But for the start of this, um, I made this game by looking at some figures and I bought one set that was when Dominion came out, which is when I really started uh, getting into my collecting phase. Um, there was a Destroy truck set that came with a truck and a raptor. I'm not sure if it came with character. I'm not sure um, But you'll see that on screen right now and This to play the game you're gonna a few things you kind of need Essentially to get things I know it sounds kind of annoying because it's probably gonna be hard to get now I'm not sure how hard it is to get to minion dress world figures um, Good luck to you, I guess uh, but some, cause some of these things do you need. Like that is your starting. The truck is what you're going to start with. All you got is your truck and a trank dart attached to it. This, that's the start of the game. I'm going to up, read off my rule books. So there might be some things. Because it's down in like an order. So there's going to be some things I'll talk about that aren't going to make sense at the time. And I'll have to uh, talk about it a little bit later. So the first thing is the truck. Um, you can only take one action per turn. This game can be played single player. Uh, but it's a lot, lot more fun if you play with more people. Uh, so, but... It, um, you can only take one action per turn, so actions, we'll talk about those later. Um, NPCs count as their own tasks, so they can do one action per turn. Their action doesn't count as yours. You have no idea what NPCs are, but we'll talk about those later in the rule book. Uh, key items are the items that you get when unlocking NPCs. Okay. Uh, again, I'm literally just reading word for word what I wrote down back in 2022. Uh, this game is also called Dominion, by the way. Dominion, a Jurassic World board game. So it says at the top. Dice rolls. So uh, you also do need a dice, um, which you can just get any normal dice. I'm pretty sure I just have some random dice I got from a box. Uh, but you just need one dice, and that's going to determine what happens for the turn. It's so, like when you start um, with the truck, the truck is your expedition truck. That's how you're going to find dinosaurs in the game. So uh, you're going to roll your dice. Uh, you must tranquilize the dinosaur uh, to try and get this. If you miss it, it escapes. Okay, so when you roll the dice, if you roll a one... The front of your truck is broken. That is the most expensive. That's like the worst thing. That's like rolling a one in D and D, basically. Um, your the front truck your is broken. That's the most expensive one, and it's going to take a few turns to fix. If you roll a two, the side of your truck is broken. Now, mind you, also if your truck is broken, you cannot do any action turns. So as long as you you'll you'll have to spend your next turn fixing it. Because as long as your truck is broken, you can't do anything. Uh, so your fir the first few rounds, like the early game is going to be very heavily uh, mixed with some dinosaur darting, but mainly you're gonna be uh, trying to get your uh, truck fixed. So one and two is the truck is broken. Uh, the three is, there's, uh, there's a rule book for that, okay. So if you roll three, we'll talk about that in a minute. If you roll four, nothing happens, that's just a neutral. If you roll five, your opponent or the other person you get to play with gets to pick the dinosaur you found. If you're doing a single player, it's just a random dinosaur. So I, I guess you can use it as a you pick it, um, or you can randomize it by just randomly selecting something yourself. And if you roll a six, you get to pick the dinosaur you found. It could be anything as long as it's not a hybrid. Um, th I think there are some, I don't think I did yet, but there are some also specific dinosaurs, like the Atrociraptors, I think you can't get normally. We'll talk about what you can and can't get later. Um, but most of the stuff you can find in the wild. If you roll a six, you can find whatever you want. Now we're going to talk about the rolling a three while exploring in the truck. So I said there was a separate rule book for this. If you roll three while you're using the truck, it only applies if you have two or more dinosaurs in or out of cages. So I'll talk about cages in a minute. 
Uh, actually, I'll talk about this right now. On the back of your truck, there is a cage. That can hold, I know it looks small, but uh, pretending that it would be as big as it needs to be, that cage can hold any dinosaur that you have, one dinosaur. So for your park at the moment that you're trying to build, because this game is a little bit of a park builder, um, that truck is going to hold one of your dinosaurs. It can hold one of anything. While that cage has a dinosaur, that dinosaur can never escape. Um, any other dinosaur you get is going to have to be in the wild until you unlock some other things like the outposts and whatever for uh, more enclosure space. So at the moment, you got one space. Uh, so you need, what did it say? Two or more dinosaurs in or out of cages. Okay, so because this is the early game, we're assuming you probably only have the one cage. So you would need to have three dinosaurs in total, one of them in the cage. I mean, you don't have to have dinosaur in the cage. You can have both of them out if you wanted to. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is a bad thing if you roll this, so we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Only plus if your dinosaurs fight, pick the most logical to win. Like raptors can pack hunt if attacked. Oh, okay. So this is a little bit of logic, and it's kind of based on your own opinion. Um, so if you have two raptors out of a cage, or, if you have two raptors out of a cage, and like one stegosaurus, they have to fight. Raptors are probably gonna win. It's up to you. Some people might say Stegosaurus is going to win for a uh, reason you may pick. So it's up to you and your group who you think would win. Um, if you roll one, the opponent picks two of your dinosaurs to fight. If you roll, So, like, let's say you had... And which might um, be annoying later in the game. is like, if you have an Indominus Rex and an Indoraptor, and your opponent decides these two need to fight, one of them is going to have to die, and because they're expensive hybrids, that's going to be kind of annoying for you because you have to grind to get one of the other ones again. Um... If you roll a two, so but this is something you roll. So if you roll a three while you're doing the truck, you're going to have to roll again to see what happens after that. If you roll a two, your opponent chooses which one of your dinosaurs escapes. Again, this is going to be very complex, so I will answer any questions you guys have in the comments, and I'll probably make a second video trying to dumb this down, because this, this is a lot, I'm aware. Um, so if you roll a two, your opponent chooses which one of your dinosaurs escapes. If you roll a three... You pick two of your dinosaurs to fight. By the way, when one of your dinosaurs escapes, that just means you lose it. Um, if you roll a four, you choose which one of your dinosaurs escapes. If you roll a five, nothing happens. You roll a six, nothing happens. Now, fixing the truck. So as you saw earlier in the video, if you roll a one or a two while you're exploring the truck, your truck can break because dinosaurs you can find in the wild will damage your truck. And you come back and you're going to have to fix it. You cannot use the truck until every part is fixed. So for the front... You need to roll a five or a six to get it fixed. If one, two, three, or four, nothing happens. So during your turn, you'll have to roll to fix the truck if you want to use it, and you're going to be rolling to fix the front. You can't use it while it's broken. The side is a little less expensive. You need you, If you roll one or a two, nothing happens, but if you roll a three, four, five, or six, the side of the truck is fixed. Now, fixing the outpost. The outpost is a very expensive and late game uh, enclosure that I will talk about in a little bit how to get that. Um, but just for now, because it's on the list, we'll talk about how to fix it. So broken parts of the outpost cannot be used until fixed. I'm actually not sure what can be broken. So we'll have to check that. I, again, I kind of forget some of these rules. So I'm learning a little bit too while we read here. Uh, fixing the outpost. Broken parts of the outpost cannot be used until fixed. Okay. Uh, you can still use the parts that aren't broken. Uh, you need to roll die and fix things one at a time. Okay. If you shoot a tranquilizer dart from the outpost... It doesn't go back. You need to fix it first. Right, okay. So if you need to tranquilize a dinosaur for a few reasons, um, but let's say you wanted to tranquilize a dinosaur for your turn, uh, you can do that. One of your NPCs can do that, so NPCs can be useful. NPCs, basically, I'll explain how to get those later. But the NPCs are like the um, characters, like Owen Grady and Claire, if you have those figures. And those, basically, you're going to want them because they, they allow you to do other tasks. They do more tasks for you. Um, so when you use a tranquilizer dart, it gets rid of the tranquilizer dart, so you're going to have to fix it to put it back in. If you shoot a tranquilizer dart from the outpost, let's go back. You need to fix it first. When the outpost is obtained, it starts with both tranquilizer darts and the launchers. Okay, nice. To fire the tranquilizers, someone must be at the tranquilizer tower. When a dinosaur is tranquilized, I wonder if that means like you can't do it and you need an NPC. I'm not sure. We'll find that out later. When a dinosaur is tranquilized, it is inactive until the next turn of the player who shot it. Okay. A dinosaur can be moved between cages only if it is tranquilized. Oh, okay. So like if you have a dinosaur that's in the outpost or in one of your truck cages, you want to move them from place to place. Like let's say you have an Indoraptor. Um, 
and Adam Sucks, I guess, in the same cage. I'm going to use those two because those are the most expensive ones to get in the game. And so when you when you play the game more, you'll realize, oh, I don't want either of these things dying because I want them. Uh, you may want to tranquilize one of them and move them out so they don't start fighting because uh, they're both aggressive. Uh, where was I? When a dinosaur is tranquilized and inactive, okay. Um, a dinosaur can move... So yeah, you can play this game competitively or work together. It's up to you. When I've played it with um, my family... Uh, usually we play it competitively, um, but the point of the outpost is it's community-led anyway, which makes it a little more fun when you're competing because uh, everyone has to share the outpost for dinosaur space, but any player can fix it. So you're going to have to work together a little bit, even though, I mean, even if you're not trying to help other people, it's helping you, so, and you're also kind of helping other people, but even if you're playing competitively with, competitively with other people, anyone can fix it. So if you want it fixed, one of you is going to have to do it. Um, to fix any part of the outpost, okay, so it, it seems like all this is the same. So any part of the outpost, one, two, three, or four, if you roll a one or two or three or four, nothing happens. For every part of the outpost, you need to roll a five or a six to fix it. Raiding an opponent's park. So this is a little bit of a complex rule. I'm going to come back to this later just because I do remember also this was a little confusing. And like even when I played, we never really used this rule that often. It sounded better in my head when I was making it. So we'll come back to that at the end of the video if I remember. Um, but just because that was like an eh kind of rule. It wasn't, it's not that it's not super fun. It's just really confusing and hard to remember sometimes. Um, so it can be fun, but not one of my favorite parts of the game. So we'll come back to that later. Jurassic Park Jeep Ford Explorer Expedition. That was a mouthful. This is the next part of the game, which you kind of do need. The base, for for the essentials for this game, I think I tallied it up a while ago, and it was somewhere around like $120. To be able to play this game, it's, a inve it's an investment to unlock some things. If you guys want to, you can always, I guess, make up your own game. Uh, this is just what I've made and with what I've had. So, I mean, if you got all this stuff at home already and you already bought these figures, like if you're a huge collector, you're, you're fine. Um, but so, like, this is one of the things that you do kind of need to play the game. And I'll show you guys what, again, you'll be seeing a video, so you'll know what this looks like. Um, the reason I'm not recording a video of showing you guys this and talking is because I forget all the rules and I, I, need to, I need to look at my notes to remember this. So, the Jurassic Park Jeep Ford Explorer, the dinosaurs you find... Uh, has to be one that you have. Okay, so this is similar to the Jeep, except you're not looking for new dinosaurs, you're looking for the same dinosaurs, and you're going to dart them for DNA. And depending on what your role is, how much of a genome you get, and this is gonna work for you making hybrids and for you to clone dinosaurs. So at some point, if you get a 100, so if you guys ever played Jurassic World Evolution, this was inspired by that. This is kind of like Jurassic World Evolution. So um, I'll explain the rules a little bit and I'll tell you how the game works. Um, in Jurassic World Evolution, if you get a 100% genome, uh, it makes it like easier to hatch and stuff. In this game, if you have a 100%, you can start hatching dinosaurs. It's also what you need to make some hybrids. Um, so, like, if you wanted to, let's say you really needed a Therizinosaurus or something, or you just wanted one, but you were tired of darting it, you get one, find, like from the wild, finally get it, and start grinding its genome out. Once you get it to 100, it, let's say that Therizinosaurus dies or you lose it, you can clone it in the lab and not have to go out exp uh, trying to get, like, hoping to get it uh, while ex exploring uh, and uh, potentially missing your shot. Like, it's a, a bunch of different things. It just makes it easier. So while you're in the Jurassic Park uh, Jeep Ford Explorer, uh, the rolling a 1 gives you a 5% genome. Rolling a 2 gives you a 10%. Rolling a 3 gives you 15 Rolling a 4 gives you 20, rolling a 5 gives you a 25, and rolling a 6 gives you a 30% genome. So it's going to take a little bit of grinding. You're not going to get these things in one to two turns. Definitely going to take a while to max these things out, um, but it is worthwhile if you just want to make copies of dinosaurs. The motorcycle expedition. I don't think this was necessary. And there's, there's, uh, yeah, this is not, for the base part of the game, this is not necessary, but I will explain it to you in case any of you guys want to use it. So the motorcycle... Uh, allows you, you find wild dinosaurs and keep them, or collect genome, you, you find wild dinosaurs and can either keep them or collect genome on them with Jurassic Park Jeep dice roll. If NPCs get in a motorcycle accident, they're dead and can be collected by an opponent. Oh, okay. Oh, this is useful. So, this is the only way you can get 
This is why the motorcycle is useful. The motorcycle is the only way you can find a truss raptors in the wild. That's what I was talking about. So you can't make these, or you, or sorry, you can make these. The only other way you can get them is the motorcycle. The motorcycle is risky though. The motorcycle allows you to do, it's like, it's a combo of the Jeep and the truck. So it allows you to find a dinosaur and you can either get them for yourself or get genome on it. Um, which sounds like, well, why wouldn't I just use that? Uh, mind you also, you don't start with all this. There will be unlocking things. The only thing you start with is the truck. All of this other stuff I'm explaining, you're going to have to unlock, and we'll talk about unlocking a little bit when I get down to it. So this is something you're going to have to work for, but also it's a little risky. Um, the motorcycle accident, you have to have an NPC to run this, by the way. Um, so if you roll a one or a two, you get in a motorcycle accident, which means whatever NPC you put on that trip uh, is dead and is now up for grabs for anybody in the lobby to... Because NPCs, you need to unlock them. So now, like, when it's dead, anyone who has the unlock requirements can do it and get the NPC for themselves. So you lose your NPCs and essentially give them to other people if they can. Um, if you roll a three or a four, nothing happens. If you roll a five, you found a dinosaur of your opponent's choice. If you roll a six, you found a dinosaur of your choice. So then again, you can... Once you find those dinosaurs, you can get a genome on it or you can uh, dart it. So that's up to you. The lab succession. So you, once you unlock the lab, you must have a 100% genome to incubate. Um, I'll talk about what these things are because the way I classified things in this game were medium and like medium and large sized creatures. Um, so uh, to roll, okay, so lab su succession is like you need to roll this number for it to successfully incubate. I assume you just have to try on the next turn if you fail. Uh, medium sized herbivore. You need to roll a two or a six. I'll show you what that looks like. Medium-sized herbivores are like your Stegosaurus and Triceratops. Your large herbivores are stuff like if you have the Brachiosaurus. Um, I think I, I classify Therizinosaurus as a medium one. The uh, Things like the long neck creatures or uh, bigger herbivores, stuff like that. Like so, Similar to that, like the Brachiosaurus, Patosaurus, things like those are large herbivores. For those, you need a three or a four or five or six. For a pterosaur, which I don't actually think I own any of those, same as sea creatures. Pterosaurs and sea creatures need to roll a four, five, or six for a successful lab creation. I don't think I own any, so let me know if I should buy some of those. Um, if I do get back into this game, I will buy a ton more of these figures. I've just been saving my money up and it's sitting there. I, it, uh, the little money I have has mainly been going to Jurassic World the game, but I can figure something out. Uh, medium carnivores, these are like your... Uh, I don't want to say something dumb. I think I'm me medium carnivores. We'd say like intrepidus, um, the velociraptors, stuff like that. Like the, some of the medium sized carnivores. Your large carnivores are like the T Rex, um, uh, Carnotaurus, things like that. I'm trying to like not sound dumb because I'm in. I'm not in my room anymore. I walked away and my cat sat on my lap, so now I don't want to go back in my room. <laughs> Um, so I don't have things next to me and I'm trying to think of stuff as examples, uh, but I, I, you'll see them. You'll see some examples cause I'll show them to you. But the medium carnivores, you need a, to roll a five or a six for a successful, uh, lab creation. And for large carnivores, you need to roll just a six. If you, you need to roll a six to incubate them. Uh, so those are going to be difficult to get. The outpost enclosure. So this is what I was talking about where you're going to put creatures. All creatures may put as many dinosaurs as they want into the outpost. So this is like the one thing, even if you're working against people, it's like the community uh, enclosure. So everyone can use it. Uh, I think one person has to... I, actually, I believe we'll look at that in a minute, but I'm pretty sure everyone has to contribute to unlock it. So that's a little bit of a community thing, even if you're working against each other. Okay, I wonder if you guys... Can you hear the cat purring? I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you can't. He's pretty loud, though. Uh, all players may have as many dinosaurs as they want in the outpost. You can just cram stuff in there. It doesn't matter what what the rules are. If it's uh, not up to regulation, cram whatever the heck you want in there. Um, this amount, uh, this is the amount of NPC. This is the amount of NPCs you need on the tower to watch different dinosaurs. Okay, so you can put as much as you want as long as you have the amount of NPCs to take care of it to make sure they don't escape. If there are not enough NPCs on the tower, the dinosaurs will try to escape using the escape rules. Okay, so you don't need NPCs, but as long as you have enough NPCs to cover the herbivores, or I don't know why I said herbivores, the dinosaurs, they cannot escape. But if you don't have them, they can just escape. Uh, let's see. So for if you have a medium size, or is it just for all of them or every? Let's see. Um... 
if there are not enough NPCs in the tower. That's up to you. I think I'd need to try playing the game more to see what seems more on balance, because I just put numbers. So that's up to whether you think, like, so for, like, for the medium size herbivore, it says one. Well, is it as long as I have one NPC, I can have as many medium sized herbivores as I want? I'm going to say for now, yes. So the rule is, if I change that later, I'll let you know. But for right now, what I'm interpreting is younger me said, as long as you have one, you can have as many medium sized herbivores as you want. For large herbivores, you only need one. For pterosaurs, you need two um, NPCs. I'm assuming it's not two different ones. I think just as long as you have two, you can watch all of them. So you can have like, you can, the more NPCs you put, the more tiers you get on the list, if that makes any sense. For sea creatures, you need two. Now, th this makes sense for a few reasons, so I'm glad I did add this in. Um, but so for the outpost, you can uh, convert it into like a aquatic enclosure. So you can only have sea creatures or land creatures in the outpost. Like you can't have a light on and a T-Rex in the same enclosure. It doesn't make sense. So if you wanted to have a light on in an enclosure, that's great. But for now, while that's in there, only other aquatics can go in the enclosure until you convert it back. Um, for medium carnivores, you need to have at least two NPCs, and for carnivores, you need to have, or large carnivores, you need three. So medium carnivores, you need two, large carnivores, you need three NPCs. The Amber Market. This was something fun that I thought was a really cool ad. The Amber Market is, uh, you can trade dinosaurs, uh, with other people, which is kind of just like a little fun way to work with others. So, like, if you have a dinosaur, like, let's say I have T-Rex, and somebody else has a Velociraptor, and I already have 100% genome on T-Rex, but I'm working towards Autonomous Rex, and I have like a 95 on a Velociraptor. So I want to have that Velociraptor so I can go out with the Jeep and get more genome on it. Because remember, with the genome, you need to have that creature on you. Uh, you can trade. So like I can say, hey, I want your Velociraptor. I'll give you my T-Rex. I say, sure. So you can trade dinosaurs that way, which is a little cool feature. Um, the dinosaur escape. This doesn't apply if they are in the truck cage or any other cage. Okay, so this is the rules for if a dinosaur tries to escape. At the end of every three turns... Okay, I added this rule. I think I got rid of... Because uh, the problem was I did some... I added some things like every three turns. You need to do this. And it's just hard to keep tally of three turns, especially when you're playing with a lot of people. Um, everyone who has dinosaurs must roll to see if they can escape. Roll these numbers. I think I just... I, at some point, I changed the rule so it was just like every turn if they're not in a cage to so force people to do it, which sounds kind of annoying. That was weird. The light in my room just turned... I'm not in my room. Light in like one of the the right the the light in the room I'm sitting in just turned on by itself. That was weird. Okay. Any anyway, um, these are some things I'll figure out again when I make my second video. Uh, but for now we'll call it. Uh, every every turn you need to like at the end of your turn if there's something not in a cage you get a roll and see if it escapes or not. Um, or well, mm, start of the turn. I don't know. The end of the turn, not the turn though that you get it. So like that makes sense. Um, medium-sized herbivores, you need to roll a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. For a large herbivore, you need to roll a 3, 4, 5, or 6. This is what you need to roll to make sure they don't escape, by the way. For a pterosaur and a sea creature and medium carnivores, you need to roll a 4, 5, or 6. And for large carnivores, you need to roll 5 or 6. So this is how you unlock NPCs. Now we're getting to the unlock stuff. This is some of the most important things because to progress the game, you're going to need to unlock stuff. So <laughs> if you weren't paying attention before, pay attention now. Um, unlocking NPCs. So the first NPC we have on the list, is, and by the way, um, I know you guys probably have more like dinosaurs and uh, playsets and people or characters that I have or that I don't own. Uh, so you might be like, what do I do with this? Uh, when I buy more stuff, I'll make rule sets for whatever I get. This is just all the stuff that I own at the moment. So I apologize for that. If you put stuff in the comments like, hey, I want to roll for this. I can work something out and work, make more rules with you guys. So for Soyana, you need to have had three raptors. The reason it says had is because even if they escaped, as long as in your entire career or an entire playthrough of that game, mine, oh, also, this board game is infinite. This is not like a, there's a winner. I guess you can if you wanted to say like, all right, whoever gets the Dynamo Strikes first wins. But in hindsight, this was meant to be an infinite game you can continue to play uh, just to make it fun so you can keep doing it uh, over and over and over because there's a lot of stuff to do in this game, as you'll see. This will be a, probably a pretty long video. Um, you need to have had three raptors. What I mean by have had is as long, like, if you got one raptor and then it escapes, you got another one that escapes and another one, there's three, and now you can get Sayana, even though they escaped. Just as long as you've had three raptors at some point, you can get Sayana. 
Uh, to get Tim, you have to go on one expedition in the Jurassic Park Jeep and have a T-Rex. For Owen, you need to have had four Velociraptors escape. So, and the reason it says has is because you can't really do it at the same time, I mean, unless you own four Velociraptors. Uh, but that would be a really annoying task. So basically, you got to dart four Velociraptors, or get four, any, uh, anyway, get four Velociraptors and have them all escape. Then you have, then you're able to unlock Owen. For the outpost guard, you need to unlock the outpost, shoot the tranquilizer darts on the outpost two times, and have a dinosaur escape from the outpost. Okay, so those are tough requirements, but uh, there's how you get that guy. And Dr. Ellie Sattler, have had one of your herbivores get eaten by a T-Rex. Again, a little bit of like a circumstance. You're going to have to pro you're gonna have to try on that one to get that one unlocked. It's going to take a little bit. Um, also, I don't know what that notification just was. Uh, oh, it's Jessica Insider. What's up, man? I'll read his stuff in a little bit. Um... <laughs> uh, I've had, so, like, to get this unlocked, you're going to have to battle, uh, like, you're going to have to get your dinosaurs out of cages and have them battle, so it's going to be a little bit, I think that's what I was talking about, uh, it's going to be a little bit of, like, circumstance, it's going to probably take you a few attempts, oh, this is what I was going to say, um, the tallies for stuff like this, like, have, have had something happen, like, if you unlock Sayana, have had three raptors, after, she, like, let's say you put her on the motorcycle and she dies, Everyone's tally for have had three raptors resets. So everyone has to race to do it again. So stuff like that, that makes sense to do it. Like everything has to reset. Um, makes sense just because um, then you can't like re-unlock your character as soon as it died. It wouldn't make much sense. But things like go on uh, or like have, have a T-Rex. If you have one on you, you don't need to get rid of it if somebody kills Tim. Uh, like you can keep that. That's not something that needs to be reset. But like... Vir quote unquote virtual things need to be reset uh, if that makes any sense unlocking items to get the taser you need to incubate one dinosaur and we'll talk about what these items do in a little bit um to unlock the taser you need to incubate one dinosaur to unlock the atrociraptor remote you need to unlock soyana so some of these things like you just get as soon as you unlock the npc you unlock an item that goes with it um to get the night vision goggles you have to unlock tim to get the utility tool, you have to unlock Owen and go on one motorcycle expedition. And for the motorcycle helmet, you have one NPC, you have to have one NPC get in a motorcycle accident. Unlocking vehicles and playsets. So this is how you unlock your vehicles and playsets like the outpost and the motorcycle. Um, for the creation lab, you just need Sayana. So once you get Sayana, that's gonna open up a ton of stuff, which actually is not super difficult to get because you only need to have three Raptors. Um, for the Jurassic Park Jeep, you need to have two different Tyrannosaurids at the, like, at the moment. Um, so in your, actively in your park, you need to have two Tyrannosaurids, um, which are, like, two different, um, I'm not sure what that was about. Two different, I, uh, I don't know. I guess it's to enforce, like, you need them at the same time. But yeah, you do need that. For the motorcycle, you need to unlock Owen and incubate an Atrociraptor. Uh, I'm not going. I'm I'm saying it a few times in my head so I can memorize. Like I can understand what I'm saying. I'm not going. Okay. Um. So for again for the motorcycle, unlock the Owen NPC and incubate in a trust raptor. For the outpost, each player must have. So this is like a whole community thing. Each player must have one dinosaur and the creation lab. So as soon as everyone has a creation lab on them, you all can decide. Like you have, to, it's not going to count as anyone's turn. You all sit down and say, "All right, we need to unlock this," and you all work for it. What you're going to do is. On that player's turn, uh, so it technically, I don't think it is your turn. I think it's just on your turn. This is one of the things you do. Uh, on a turn, if they meet the requirements, they may put a dinosaur back in the wild pile. So, like, sacrifice one of your dinosaurs and discard an NPC you have to the character pile to contribute building the outpost. Each player does this and then rolls a die on their turn. If uh, This does not count as an action, yes. If they all roll six, the outpost is built. If not, they must regain an NPC. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say, that's freaking ridiculous. Um, no, so, and, and because I probably even thought that sounded stupid when I was writing it, uh, but it does say at the very end, uh, players do not have to get all sixes in a row. So, like, let's say you're playing with three other people. I don't, like, let's say I sacrifice a dinosaur and an NPC. I roll a six. The next guy sacrifices a dinosaur and an NPC. He rolls a six. The next guy sacrifices a dinosaur and an NPC. He rolls a six. We get to the last guy, and he rolls, like, a five, and it's like, oh, everyone has to restart. No, just that guy needs to do it. As long as everyone else has gotten their six, 
they're done. As soon as that one guy who missed it gets his six, then your outpost is built. So as long as you get sixes at, at some point, you're good. Um, unlocking dinosaurs. So this is how you unlock your dinosaurs. The Atrociraptors, once you have incubated three raptors, have Sayana go on an expedition in the Jeep. Uh, okay. Wait. While Sayana is doing this, only a Atrociraptor genome. Interesting. I thought you could get a try. I guess that's weird. I must not have clicked things or I updated the motorcycle later. I, that's probably what happened is the motorcycle got updated later. Um, but so you can get them, you can get the Atrocer Raptors from a motorcycle expedition or you can get them this way, which is once you have incubated three Raptors, you can have Sayana go on an expedition in the Jeep. Um, and it guarantees a Atrocer Raptor genome. Uh, and so you can just grind that. To get Adonimus Rex, you have to have 100% genome on Velociraptor and T-Rex. Uh, similar to Jurassic World Evolution. And once that is done, for an action, you can use the Jurassic Park Jeep and get the Adonis Rex. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to continue using the Jeep for guaranteed... Like, if you say, I'm working towards Adonis Rex, guaranteed every time you're getting a Adonis Rex genome. Once it's at 100, then you can start incubating it. That's how you're going to get that. And to get Indoraptor, you need to have 100% genome on the Velociraptor and Zonim Shex, which you already have it on the Velociraptor because you got it. I know I wanted to buy a blue figure because I was going to say you need 100% on blue and then you need 100% uh, on Adonis Rex. So if you have a blue on you, it needs to be a blue. Um, I'm going to buy a blue as soon as I can because uh, it's it literally says in the notes, please get one. Um, but so you need, if you don't have a blue, just Velociraptor, so just Adonis Rex. But if you own a blue figure, you need 100% blue genome and 100% Indominus Rex. Then similar to that, you're going to go in the Jeep and every time you're getting guaranteed Indoraptor and you just need to get do it until you get 100% genome. Uh, there we go. NPC rules. NPCs can only do one task at a time. So the NPCs are like you and they just do one task at a time. Honestly, actually, I was thinking about maybe showing you guys like a video of stuff. I might low-key just crop it down so you see the notes and see what I'm looking at. It might make more sense to look at. Uh, what items do? So you can read it yourself. I think I'm going to do that. Uh, what items do? Note, key items can only be used by that NPC. Key items are items that require... Interesting, okay. So key items, like, I think that's just all the items. Or, yeah, isn't it? Most of the items, at least. So the items can only be used by their specific... Um, what is it? Specific person, right? Yeah. Um... Taser, when the dinosaur tries to escape. Uh, okay, so key items are items that require you to unlock a specific... Oh, okay, it's so... The items that say, like, when you unlock an NPC, you get them, those are key items. That means only that NPC can use that item. So the taser, when dinosaurs try to escape, add one or more die number to your roll. Um, okay, so, like, a Velociraptor is a medium carnivore. So if you... I, I'm, I appreciate that my younger self put an example. So... If you have to get a four, five, or six to keep your raptor enclosed, but you have a taser, you need to roll a three, four, five, or six. So that's useful. Okay. The Atrociraptor remote. When you have an Atrociraptor, you can send it out to turn. Oh, right. Okay. So basically, what that does is if you try and attack somebody's park, um, you can, instead of them, like, I think there's some rule that like, they have to pick what dinosaur it is or whatever. So you can guarantee send it out. And we'll see what happens. Uh, this can, but it's a little bit of a gamble, but can potentially guarantee the kill. Even if, like, let's say the Atrociraptor goes fight an Indoraptor, uh, Indoraptor probably logically would win, uh, but the Atrociraptor can win if you have this remote. So if you roll a one or a two, the Atrociraptor dies. Roll a three or a four, nothing happens. And if you roll a five or a six, the opponent's dinosaur is killed. The night vision goggles doubles the genome percent. Um, you get when going on an expedition. Well, how do you unlock that? That's a really, really useful one. Um, to get that, you need... You just need to unlock Tim. So that's very useful. So you keep going in the Jeep with Tim. Basically, you're doubling it. Like, if you roll a 6... Um, yeah, if, like, if you, it says right here. Example, if you roll 30% genome, uh, it's 60. So you can get stuff real quick, which is very useful. Um, the utility tool. If a dinosaur is fighting or escaping... You can choose to kill it instead of losing the other dinosaur. Okay. Nice. Uh, motorcycle helmet, rolling a two when using a motorcycle on an expedition does nothing. Okay, so you have to roll a one to clear your NPC. And that's it. I know this is a stupid long video. I apologize for that. I don't know how long I've been recording for. I'll see you in a minute. It's probably going to be like 20 minutes. Um, that was me totally 
yapping. I know this is a very complex game, and this is the entire rule book. I read it myself. Um, but I do want to play this game soon, and I probably will do a live stream doing it. So let me know if this sounded interesting to you. I know it was a whole lot. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll try and deep dive some more. Probably make a second video talking about this. That is it for me today. I'll see you guys.